answering a viewer question concerning my suburban council house homestead garden and sharing a few details of the, some of the plans I've actually been able to write down. Welcome. It's lovely to have you along with us. I'm so grateful for you being here. Um, I hope that you enjoy the things I share. If you have any other questions or suggestions, do feel free to share them. If you hold out to the end of the video, that would be a great support as well. If you've got too much to do, just stick around and leave it playing while you're busy. Um, so, right, I want to answer at least one viewer question today in this video. Um, and it took a while preparing it. The question was, they wanted to know some more of the details of my garden, some of the, the size, the aspect, the, um, what else was it? By the way, this is a point and shoot and upload video. I'm not editing this one. I've got one that was meant for earlier in the week, but I, I am having some editing issues. So until I can get that done. Um, <laughs> this is the one you've got raw and edited. <laughs> okay, let's get started. Buttons, thank you very much. Yes, love you too. Okay, so these are the drawings I've come up with. These used to be old drawings I found from when we first moved in. I can't find the others. I know I had more in-depth ones um, of in-between, but that's all I've got. And so I made new ones, but it's not as pretty. But it is very comprehensive. And I'm not going to bore you with all the details. All I need to say on the size is that it's nine and a half meters from that fence to that hedge there, the conifer hedge. If you take away the hedge, it'll be at least an extra half a meter so it's probably about 10 meters that way from that privet hedge to the wall on the house it is 12 and a half meters yeah yeah 12 meters and i imagine without the um hedge at the back it'll be at least 12 and a half to 13 meters so a very good size back garden for a UK suburban council house garden. It's quite a big garden really. It didn't look this big when we first had it. I'll put a link to the timeline video from our garden and um, you can see what it looked like before I did anything and it was a, literally a blank canvas and it looked much smaller and somehow cramming all of this stuff demonstrates just how big the garden really is. We've had a little bit of wind damage with all the storms we've been having. The beetroot leaves have all been munched and dying down, but they can be harvested because I have run out of beetroot relish. But anyway, it just demonstrates how big this garden really is. And the beds are one meter by four meters 20, I think on these ones, one and a half meters on these ones and one meter across this one's a bit more than a meter across so yep and this one is smaller this one is three meters 25 by 80 centimeters yeah all the paths are also 80 centimeters wide so fairly good i've done all the drawing but i'm not going to give you all of those measurements <clears throat> i did measure out the shades and that just says that i could get the drawing slightly more accurate um, the, the yellow is the house and that is the front garden and we have quite a few um, plans for it and I'll talk you through those in the meantime before we do that I have just this morning put some collars so to speak around the apple trees and the buddleia and the canes are on that apple tree um, Mate, I used Vaseline. I saw that on the internet. I do not like using Vaseline. It's made from petroleum chemicals, so I don't like it. But at the same time, I can't afford tree collars. And I'm hoping to beat the codling moth this year. But that's not the only problem we sometimes get. We tend to get also bitter pits. So I'm going to have to sort out irrigation during the hottest, driest months. 
um, and we also have mice problems. You've seen my apple trees before. I regularly get little bits of the bark chewed away by mice frequently and they keep doing it every year. And I did have some, um, I did have CDs hanging up, but the string kept breaking. And also the shiny bits of the CDs eventually wears off in all the weathers. But Buttons, dear, loves the CDs because it makes flashy lights that she likes chasing around the garden. So it's entertaining for her anyway. But yeah, I've done that with the apple trees. Um, and I'm going to have to move all the pots and canes and anything like those fire bricks. I'm going to have to move out of the way for mice not to be able to jump from that to the trunk and get past the Vaseline. I read the petroleum jelly, shall I say. Let's not give any brand names any um, <coughs> free advertising here. <laughs> One day when I'm an affiliate marketer, then I might be able to do that. But for now, no, it's petroleum jelly. Um, I'm wondering if it will not just help with the codling moth but also the scale insects which we get a lot of in this garden and hopefully it, the mice won't like it. I don't know how long a mouse can stretch its body out for but I'm hoping I have put it um, on, a, on a long enough stretch for the mice not to be able to stretch over it but I do need to move any obstacles they can jump from and circumvent those straps around the trees. So I'm wondering if it will work for that. I hope so. And I certainly hope I've not left it too late because this is February now, the very first days of February. And I don't know if I've left it too late because I'm sure the coddling moth get up there immediately as soon as the, 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 um, the buds are coming up. But I think these are leaf buds rather than... Oh, there is a brand new munched bit just last night. Oh, and more. I'm going to have to chop that bit off because that's right through the bark to the inside and that will just leave it open to disease. So that's going to have to be cut back now. And that, look, that's brand new as well. Oh, the little beasties. I'm sure they're just hungry, but yeah, I'm going to have to check today or well, as soon as it's dry because it's a bit misty today, misty rain. Hmm. Oh gosh. So yes, that's a job to do is move all of the obstacles they could jump from to get to the trees. I've already moved the scores and era tubs. Um, there's one more over there to move. The privet's going to have to move. The oak, I the little oak sapling there, I have um, put um, petroleum jelly on as well and the buddleia and the canes. But everything else has got to move. So that's tackling one problem get back to the viewer questions as well as to when our frost dates are that is hit and miss here where we are the earliest we've had frost ever is December beginning of December but it doesn't stay it disappears again it's not an extremely hard frost I think we had minus four Celsius that day the one day we had last year and then there's another day not actually last December we had more than the year before the lot the December before that of 22 we had four days of frost complete through the whole winter in our garden but last one 2023 December we had more than a week but because of all the storms the rain the the huge gusts of wind it was very good it was like proper gales um, we didn't have a lot of frost we had I think there was four five six storms between December and January mid to in January so there was a lot of storms but that helped to keep the frost at bay but it's still been cold it's not been minus for long though we haven't had very many minus days at all it's been quite warm and wet. That's why we had all the problems with the mold in the house and the wind and the rain driving through the windows. Um, and the house is damp inside anyway with all this weather. We're all, everybody we know is full of sniffles and coughs and so am I. 
and that's not edited out I'm sorry but yeah so there's a lot of work to do and the plants aren't liking being too wet and cold either they're not liking it but neither do I still there's still a lot to do um in the back garden it's a bit more sheltered than the front garden so we don't get that much frost, although I have been noticing in the morning the wood on the tops of the raised beds always have a very, very, very thin layer of frost. It's so pretty when I let buttons out for a week at like four in the morning with the torch and the light hits the frost. It's so pretty with all the beautiful, sparkly, glittery shininess of frost. It's beautiful. But then... It doesn't last for long. There was a bit of frost early this morning, but the rain, there's this misty fine rain that um, washes it away. It'll be back overnight. Yes, buttons. It'll be back. What have you got to say about the garden? You like it? You're always out here sniffing, lying down, grounding. Yes, that's what it's for. But it looks a bit of a mess at the moment because with all the storms and the weather we've had for the last few months, I've not been out here except to prune the trees. I've tidied the front garden, cleared out the one composter. I think I told you about that. Um, I've done quite a bit out there actually, tidying up and getting things ready for spring. But that's on the odd days we've had dry. Right now, all the work we're doing is indoors and I've been doing a huge amount of clearing out that is why there's quite a few things in the potting shed and in here ready to go to the um, recycling center on Tuesday I have an appointment you still got to book your appointments to get there now so I've booked an appointment at the recycling center for Tuesday so I'll be getting rid of more clearing out which leaves space for me then to do more clearing out for next month's um, recycling center booking because we have a van we're only allowed one a month so it's 12 visits to the recycling center a year um, other if you have a normal car you've got 26 yeah regardless of the fact that ours is not a work van doesn't matter they don't care it's the size of it and you're only allowed 12 visits a year although we very rarely have more than three or four in an entire year so I'm not feeling too guilty about that and that is just while I'm clearing out and getting things in order because the whole aim of this garden is to get it to a, such a state that there's very little having to come in and nothing having to leave that is the aim both of garden and home that is the ultimate goal other than staying on top of being able to grow food we can't grow everything we possibly need from our garden we certainly could grow a lot more if we didn't have raised beds then we'd grow this entire section and that entire section but I can grow more because I could still go vertically up against walls as we've done with the strawberry tower there which will very soon be planted up <clears throat> but there's a lot more spaces we could grow on. We could put even more trellising up here with baskets um, for more growing space. And on the potting shed and on the fence posts and make a better fruit cage there, which we are going to. It's on the to-do list. But the projects from doing all these plans and looking at what we have, what we need, and <clears throat> going through my annual um, review book, both of business, home and garden. Um, the jobs that are most important this year, that end of the workshop has never been painted or clad. It's just the original wood and it was a second, it was a made up of two different sheds. Um, and we've clad this one side again to cover it up so that it's um, more waterproof and windproof. But the back end has never been done. I mean, the side end has never been done and it desperately needs doing. It's looking absolutely terrible. So we, we've got a few sheets of the corrugated tin left. We're going to be putting that up this year to protect that end of the, the workshop. 
so that is an essential job this year another essential job to do in sorting out the workshop and making it more usable throughout the year is we're connecting electricity from the house to the workshop so that the power tools um, the lathes and such and the band saws and things um, can work better because we're just using extension lead from the from the house at the minute and it's not it's not appropriate so we're going to be putting up framing in between the beds so that a conduit could go on the frame above not quite like arches but to the workshop above the ground in conduit so we can put the conduit up ready for the electrics to be installed by a qualified electrician and we're saving up for that because that is going to cost around 700 to eight well We've had three different quotes, all ranging from 600 to 750. And I imagine by the time we've saved up enough money, it'll probably be even more than that. So we have to save up at least, I would say, a thousand pounds. Because that is the kind of job we're not doing ourselves. We would rather have it done by a proper electrician. And in a way, that's not interfering with the structure of the house or anything like that. Um, so we can get the right paperwork as well to prove it's been done by a qualified person so we're not going to be doing anything wrong this is a council house um so we don't want to be ruffling feathers or drawing the wrong attention so we'll be doing things above board and in the right way life is less stressful that way i mean even if uh, if it was a private property we'd still have to apply for planning permission to put a proper workshop there which is what we would do but in the meantime we've got sheds stuck on pallets stuck on bridge blocks and in eight years they've been fine but we do need to make sure that shed can that workshop can be used all through the year so we're going to be putting some insulation in the roof and some of the rubber matting on the floor and covering up around the outside of the bottom by all the breeze blocks and pallets that's going to be covered to stop cold coming in from the bottom um yeah the walls have already been insulated on the inside i used bubble wrap and um foam from old cities foam sections so let's hope that's okay other than that um the back the electrics, the insulation in the workshop. Um, in the garden, we need to, what was there we needed to do in the back? Oh, cover in the sides. Our neighbor has offered us some double glazed windows. Um, so we're gonna cover in the sides of the potting shed, but because it's glass, it is toughened glass, but for safety's sake, we're gonna build up the sides with wood and framing and only put the glass on the top. Just thinking about our grandchildren and safety. And some we might use to replace the windows in his workshop because those are single glazed Perspex windows. So those are the ones we're getting a double glazed glass ones. So we will replace those with that. And I would like to if I can cover in the sides here with trellis in on this side and the other here so that this can be more covered for the winter to shelter my more tender and exotic plants. That's the plants in the back garden. Uh, we've completed this project for this year already except for filling and planting. That's, that is the, um, the back garden. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that and I'll do another video for the front garden which I'll probably upload on Monday because it's nearly time to go and get my grandchildren. Before I leave, I want to say a very big thank you if you've stuck it out to the end of the video. You are my heroes. I really appreciate your support in watching the videos. I am... Um, we have new subscribers. You're very welcome. I hope you enjoy visiting this channel and that you get something out of it. If um, I would also like to re-extend the invitation for questions and suggestions and anything like that to do with suburban homesteading, gardening, homemaking, crafting, 
and self-reliance. I have actually, I've got an update for you on the self-reliance side and I've created a completely new set of emails and YouTube channel and everything else to do with that so I can separate the self-reliance stuff from the homesteading because even though it's part of what we do, it's a separate subject and a very big one that I want to cover separately. So I just made a rod for my own back and a lot more work, but I hope that's helpful to somebody. Wow, there's a lot going on, as well as clearing out indoors. Like I said, this time of the year, we're focusing on indoors, waiting for the, um, the gap in the weather. But as soon as I've got the rubbish cleared out, from the potting shed it's time to get seeds grow um sown so watch the space um what else was there i wanted to say before leaving before saying goodbye for this week um i can't remember it's a blank i'm sure it'll come to me and then i'll let you know in the next video so welcome new subscribers new visitors new viewers um thank you and I'll see you next video, which is a bit more on the garden and something else. Oh, yeah, I've got another podcast to do as well. Oh, and I've started up another blog as well. So I'll share all of those details very soon. So do come back and I'll speak to you again. Bye bye, lovelies. Bye.